Hello, hello. Doing a cooking demo, something different for me, but very excited to uh, be joined by Laura Pali of Cucina Testarosta, who is going to show us how to make some spring vegetable dishes to pair with Alsatian Pinot Blanc. So Pinot Blanc from the Alsace region of France. Um, she's making a frittata and some bruschetta um, with spring vegetables because they're the best thing with Pinot Blanc. Well, let me say this, Pinot Blanc is the best thing with these dishes. There's always a green note and a brightness and a snappiness that I think goes with these foods. But something's funny on the uh, Instagram must be overwhelmed this afternoon because it's very slow to load. So bear with me, you have to look at me for another 30 seconds while everybody comes on here. Hi, Forziati Wines. Um, bear with us. Instagram is loading slow. <laughs> it's so funny that it's a, such a time traveling thing to be on here because uh, when I've watched them, it's always a, a big delay of when people see your text and reply. Now you can load pictures. That's the way Instagram keeps you guessing. You can load pictures now here while we talk. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Anna, hello, honey. Um, Laura's, it's the Instagram is so capricious. Um, we're cooking spring vegetables with um, Alsatian Pinot Blanc. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned, there's Laura. Um, let's see. Am I here? Where are you? Now I can't see you, Jeff. Damn. <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking, aren't I? Sorry, I'm reading the conversation <laughs> between Anna and David. Uh, bear with us. Laura is crossing the ether to get to me through the internet. I have invited her and, um, Instagram. Everybody must be on Instagram today at lunch. It's lunchtime somewhere. There we and go. There, there we are. go. Hi, Yay, hon. Hi. Always takes a, takes a minute. <laughs> um, Zuckerberg, let's just fix your fricking program. Pause a moment and maybe have a <laughs> sip of wine while we let a few people on here. Anna and David Forziati right. are here. Um, what's the first thing in your glass? Grab a glass. What's closest so to you? The first thing is Domain Weinbach. Oh, that's closest to me too. <laughs> awesome. Funny how that works. It is, um, it's from the Kaiserberg uh, mm. area. And mm -hmm. um, it was a, it, the original winery was a, um, 1612 Capuchin Monastery. So um, it right. has holy, holy beginnings. <laughs> and I interviewed oh, Eddie Fowler in my Instagram uh, oh, vineyard kidding. chats. Yeah, cheers. Here, let's. Cheers. Ding. Uh, yeah, so I interviewed him twice in my um, vineyard chats. We did mm. once up on the slope and then once during harvest while they were crushing and everything. Oh, wow. How yeah. cool. So um, just to tell everybody what we're doing today, we are going to show how Pinot Blanc goes with spring vegetables. So uh, mm -hmm. once we get going, you're going to talk about how to cook them. And initially, I think we should kind of talk about, I just want to say what spring vegetables we've found. What did you decide to cook with? So for the frittata, um, I put in just classic vegetables that just scream springtime. So basil, asparagus, peas, spring onions, and then um, for the cheese that I'm putting in, I'm putting in mostly feta, but we'll dust it with a little um, pecorino at the end because the pecorino really um, brings out the, um, the, the um, Pinot Blanc. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's the frittata. And then for our crostini, um, morels. With, I found these gorgeous morels at Far West wow. Fungi in, um, at the Berry Building here in San Francisco. Nice. And um, yeah, they're beautiful. And so I saute these morels and um, saute them with some peas. So peas and morels are quintessential spring. Um, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna put it um, on some, I grilled some bread for us, for me, <laughs> <laughs> the, co the collective us. Um, I grilled right. some bread 
this is, I love um, making bread this way. I learned it from this restaurant, Cafe Stella, down in um, uh, L.A. Oh, my God, I'm blanking on the area. Um, but they, when they make their um, BLTs, they grill the bread. And okay. it, when I had that, I was like, oh, my God, I've got to do my bread this way. I just get um, a pan, uh, frying pan, saute pan, and I put in olive oil, salt, and pepper on the pan, get it pretty okay. hot, and then put the bread on it and just okay. let it caramelize. And I flip it over, brown it. And um, so I'm, I've got it on both sides. Like Mediterranean French toast. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to so, tell you the vegetables that I brought. So last okay. week I made, a, I, I, cooked, I cooked some okra and some fiddlehead ferns and um, made a, and just bought a vegan pesto and tossed it with um, some green zucchini mm. and had like, had like pasta. And I had that a couple days ago with the Pierre Spar and it was gorgeous. And one of the things I, I'm, I'm thinking the word that makes me think of all these things is the word snap. Because when you snap mm -hmm. an asparagus, it's that point where it breaks is where you cut it off. Snap green beans to clean the tips from, you know, it's just, yeah. and there's a snappiness to these wines. They're just like fresh and there's a crispness and a, just snap is my, is my go-to. So I got it's my radishes that I'm going to nosh beautiful. on. I grilled some, I can't hold things up. I, I grilled some in? okra, which I don't really okay. know if that's officially spring, but it is I should carry. <laughs> I yeah, showed Carrie with it. I got this the other day. It's a grill pan for the stove that's oh, supposed awesome. to be smokeless. It's not smokeless, okay. but um, <laughs> but no neighbors knocked on my door with the with the um smokiness. <laughs> I I found some nettles, and this is going to be scary for me because they're so prickly. But Ooh. you just throw them in boiling water, and the the right. prickles go away, and they're like spinach in the soup, or put them with beans, or I think I'm going to saute them with um. With this, I have a, um, a, this is a pound of Hen of the Woods mushrooms. Oh, beautiful. That are extraordinary wow. at the market today. And then this is something I've been playing with is um, a nopale. It's not springtime, but oh, um, yeah. you grill, you strip, cut these into strips and grill them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a sandwich out of that. And then the final thing, which I'm blown away by these, Laura, is these fiddlehead ferns. Which Aren't are, they beautiful? But I just, usually they're cooked when you get them. I don't usually see them raw. And they're actually yeah. a fern leaf. Like if you really look yeah. in there close, the whole leaf is like rolled up in a little ball. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Amazing. And these are forged. So they have all that stuff on them. See, it's yeah. G rated. They have stuff on them from the forest floor. <laughs> um, that is a bit of a pain to rinse off. But okay, um, I'm going to stop talking now and just watch you cook. So go. <laughs> <laughs> well, along, the, along your lines of you were saying snapping, um, I, it was funny because I just had a memory pop up on Facebook of, um, uh, um, of, of snapping peas with your grandmother. So it was oh, one that's of right, my, you did, yeah. One of, my, one of my memories, one of my really wonderful memories is snapping peas with my grandmother and my two um, great aunts. So, you know, they would all sit around with a big pot um, between them and they would, we would mm -hmm. just snap peas for hours. So... Um, so and that that's, always you're up. snapping the you're snapping the pot open, and then you just with your thumb flick the peas out, right? Right, right. But. Yeah, or you can just <laughs> if it's if it's green beans, you just pull the end off. But yeah, right. there's always something green and snapping in the spring. So um, so I love the analogy. Um, awesome. The first thing we're gonna make so um, uh, pinot blanc and eggs go really well together as well as yes. vegetables. So um, we are gonna make a frittata, and I made a, a test run. Um, just a few minutes ago. Gorgeous. It's just not it's gorgeous. Beautiful. I think this is the most beautiful frittata I've ever made. But can you or I will say my piece about Pinot Blanc and eggs because there's a fattiness from the yolk, which the crispness of the wine cuts through. But then there is this hollandaise thing that makes sometimes difficult. But there's a creaminess of these wines and a snappiness that really makes them go across. And eggs can be kind of intro. I think you're really pairing with the things that you put with it. But yeah. in general, yeah, a Pinot Blanc is the wine you serve at brunch. It's the wine you put with eggs almost in any way, and it's it's fantastic. And so we've got a few options here. So sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's fine. No, because Pinot Blanc pairs really well with cheeses, with salads, um, uh, uh, lighter foods. So um, we've got all of our spring vegetables here, and I I saute all the vegetables individually. So let me I'm going to set this and one why aside. Why do you do that? I will tell you. <laughs> oh, excellent. So the reason we saute each, so I have them all here. 
um, but I sauteed um, asparagus, peas, um, I threw in some avocado, some spring onion, and then um, we have some basil. But the reason we do them uh, individually is so that um, to really deepen each flavor, if you were to just throw all the vegetables in raw, it would just kind of be a mash of flavor. Whereas okay. if you saute each one individually, sauteing it, you're gonna deepen the flavor to this, this beautiful sort of caramelized flavor, which I love. Let me heat up my pan here. Um, so um, uh, we're gonna caramelize them, but also um, you always wanna season everything that you put into something so that each bite you can taste the individual flavors as opposed to just a mash of flavors. So, um, so that's why I always do them individually. And um, then we've got our feta cheese. So what I do is, um, um, I've got this, you, okay, I've got this fancy Williams Sonoma um, frittata pan that's got a locking top that, um, that flips out. I don't want to flip it over because the butter will go flying, but um, this flips over and, um, and it'll help it cook faster because you're, you're trapping the heat in and then you just flip it into the other pan. So it's perfect. So what I do here is I've got my pan. Um, I have butter and olive oil, um, butter for the flavor. <laughs> And um, olive oil for the, um, you know, brings the, the burn point up. So mm -hmm. butter burns at a lower temperature than, um, than uh, um, olive oil. So putting them together it raises the temperature. <clears throat> I'm just going to add in all these vegetables and just, um, just move them around so that they're all over evenly. Was the pan hot already? It was. The pan was it hot was. already. Okay. Yeah. And, and butter, you said. Yeah, we want to get it to start cooking right away. So we want to um, spread these around so that there's a little bit, so that in every bite, you get a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And then, um, can you see this? I can't tell. Yeah. I can't 100% okay. see the frittata, but once people okay. watch it with the pinned comment gone, it'll be fine. Okay, so then I just, um, I put the cheese in. And I've also salt and peppered the eggs um, as well. Oh, you whisk them at you salted peppered in the bowl already okay yeah yeah so everything's seasoned individually um and if, if called for sauteed individually so i've got a pretty good distribution of um i'll hold it up ah ouch oh, don't bring <laughs> I'll yourself carefully hold it up so i don't know if you beautiful can okay so i'm just going to put this on on the stove on um medium low so the secret with eggs and um a lot of people don't do this. The secret with eggs is low and slow. Um, if you cook eggs really fast, it will, um, they'll just toughen up and they'll turn brown. Like we don't want it to turn brown. We want things golden brown, but not um, burned brown. Um, so the, um, eggs will get really chewy and tough and not have great flavor. So, um, so it's just low and slow, no matter what kind of eggs you're cooking. So you did that demo once where I was watching you make scrambled eggs and I, I've heard that so many times. I didn't realize you could do, it's the same principle when you're doing something, you're basically just letting it sit there now, right? Right, right, exactly. So, um, yep, so we've got this okay. going. I've got it on medium. I'm gonna flip the lid over if you guys can see this. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. um, so I've got the top on. Do I have my light on? Yeah, light's on. Um, and so we're just gonna let that cook on medium. And so by the end, it should probably be done. Oh, um, but we're just going to let that go because it's on medium low. Okay. And, um, it's like we just don't touch it. So that's. Um, I don't know if that. Anna and Carrie are still on here, but we talked the other day that they were. Um, they did a thing with spring vegetables and pairing. They did Albarino. And I just had one of these okra, and there's that. I mean, it's much less. I grilled them, and there's much less of it, but there's a little bit of sliminess inside, which is not mm -hmm. unpleasant. It, some people hate it. But I got to say, this, I'm. I need to, I'm going to move on, but the, the Weinbach or Weinbach um, has a creaminess, mm -hmm. a textural creaminess that really, it, it, it works with that sliminess of the right. okra and the green. It's actually quite, quite good together. So I'm very content mm -hmm. to sit here and nosh on my okras <laughs> while you cook fancy things. <laughs> well, it's that, you know, we, you know, in pairing, we do like with like or opposite with like. Exactly, and, yeah. um, and, you know, that's one of those opposites. So, um, you know, you've got the kind of the, the sliminess, earthiness of the okra, and then you've got uh -huh. this bright, beautiful kind of pear, peach, lemon zest of the Pinot Blanc. And, um, and so, but they, they balance each other out and they're, they're they really beautiful do. together. So, um, so while our frittata is cooking, 
I'm going to make our morel, um, our spring crostini. And like I said, I grilled the bread. I grilled the bread on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I do with my grilled cheese sandwiches, too. I grilled the inside first. And then I oh. flip them over. And, um, and then when I flip them over, I'll put cheese on each side. And then I'll just put them together. So that sounds that's my like little inside scoop. Um, so for, the, um, for our crostini, um, We've got, again, we're going to the earth. We've got these beautiful morels. Morels are, are just glorious right now. These are the sauteed ones with peas. And um, here are the, um, here are the raw ones. So they don't lose too much. They don't use too much size. Um, mushrooms shrink massively, but you know, they're still, yeah, still, pretty, well, okay. still pretty good. And um, so I just sauteed those up in, um, I got the pan really hot. These guys were really okay. dirty. So I, you know, you never want to, um, wash of mushrooms because they're like little sponges so if you wash yeah. them they're just going to soak up all that water and it's going to take so much longer to cook but these guys were really dirty so i just did a quick rinse under the water and then i just yeah. put it in a dry hot pan and um, oh. and let it and let it dry out for a few minutes and then i added the olive oil and i added a little bit of butter because because i could <laughs> okay. so um and then so i'm going to put um we've got the morels and peas which is you know screaming spring and then um, I've got, uh, this is a Della Fattoria bread from, um, mm -hmm. from Sonoma County. And then I'm gonna put a um, um, uh, avocado and pea mash. So this is a little secret I learned at Rancho La Puerta down in Mexico where I teach cooking once in a while. For their guacamole, they cut the pea, they, they cut the guacamole with peas. So it's half avocado, half peas. And you can use edamame, you can use, um, uh, like if you blanch broccoli or asparagus, it's just a way to make the guac a slightly bit healthier. Um, okay. uh, you know, and if you've got kids, it's a great way to sneak in um, some healthy food that they won't eat. So, and then we are going to top it with a poached egg. So oh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to hold up on putting this together until our egg is ready. So I'm going to get this going here. The water. Laura, is... um, Carrie just asked, did you chop the morels or cut them subtly to keep their shape? They're just whole, I did right? Not. They're whole. I just I cut the, the the ends off, but I just I kept them oh. whole. So okay. I can chop them if we want to put them on top, but I just think they look so pretty. Yeah. Um, they're so beautiful with that honeycomb look. So um, for our water, um, I've got the, so poaching is cooking something in um, in a in a very gently simmering liquid, and it's a very gentle mm -hmm. way to cook something. It's a very healthy way to cook something as well. Um, so I've got some water in the pot, and then. Um, bring it up to a simmer so it's there and then we put our vinegar in now if you were to put the vinegar in um before it would um evaporate so we're just oh. gonna put a little bit of white wine vinegar in and that just helps the whites stay together so okay. and of course i put my eggs away good lord one <laughs> second sorry sorry no but while you're grabbing those i have to say i just grabbed a, a radish to, to chew on uh -huh. and this um christoph meeknacht Pinot Blanc is much brighter. I, I, it's so much more snappy since that's uh -huh. the word today. And I have to tell you, it is fantastic with the radish. You, oh, cool. um, this is a weird thing for me, but I think there's a, once you get over the I snappiness of the radish, there is a fruitiness there, similar to like an around. apple that there, the, if you take away the greenness and the acid, there's a fruitiness. And um, taste that meeknak. What do you think? You can can you picture mm. that with a radish or a, even a fresh turnip yeah. or a carrot? It's um, yeah. it matches the crunchiness. It's a different textural thing. It's not as not really creamy, but really mm. crunchy and crisp and bright. And it's it's outstanding with the radish. Yeah, I should have brought delicious. some butter and uh, salt over salt. here to the, yes. to the to my office, my my studio. <laughs> All right. So the egg <laughs> is going to go in. I'm going to do okay. this because I recommend. Um, before you I'm cooking with Katie, we have another cook on here, Laura. Yay! Hi, Katie. Um, so I, you always want to break your egg into a bowl first before you add it into anything, just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. You didn't get shells in it. It just saves a lot of scrambling. So okay. this is so this is simmering. We're not boiling because if you were to put this into boiling water, it would just tear apart the egg, and you would just right. have scrambled scrambled egg in water, which is not appetizing. So then what we're going to do is um, we're going to make a vortex. So I'm going to stir this in a, in a circle to get a vortex going. 
And what that's going to do is it, it's going to help pull the eggs together. So what? I'm uh, so I'm doing this little vortex here. The water's spinning, and I'm just going to gently put the egg in. Oh. And so, so the egg is spinning, so it's pulling the the white together. So you're putting it in the middle of the vortex. So it's kind of like the drain funk factor thing is keeping is spinning it together. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're full of tips and tricks. Yeah. I just learned this from somebody. I'd never, I'd, um, uh, uh, the chef who is at um, Ame, he does it with scrambled eggs, but he, yeah. he does the vortex with scrambled eggs intentionally. And, and it's incredible how it comes out. So that's where I first heard about it. So that's huh. gonna, it's just going to take a few minutes to cook. So, um, and I've got it on medium low. So while that's cooking, I am going to dish up our crostini. Can you so got... um, explain just the, the simmering water? You just get it to a boil and then you bring it down. So it's just little bubbles are coming up. So it's officially boiling, right. but hardly. Right, okay. just simmering. Does anybody know what simmer happy. means? Well, it was funny, like 30 years ago, before I went to cooking school, I called my mother one day and said, what is, I was trying to make something. And I said, called her and said, what does simmer mean? And she's like, <laughs> she goes, are you kidding me? Like, no, you never tell me how to cook. What is simmer? I wouldn't call you if I didn't know what it meant. So simmer is just a very gentle boil, like just when it starts to boil. Um, and did, it's, did, did you ever see that episode of Schitt's Creek when um, they were making yes. fold it in? Fold in the cheese. That is my favorite episode ever. Moira and uh, David Rose classic. So classic. I'm just going to put the, um, and you can just do this with pea mash as well. You don't need to do avocado or any kind of, mash really and this is just to i mean add flavor and beauty because we eat with our eyes first so we always want yep. to um make sure what we're doing is beautiful and so i am i'm just going to place these um morels on and um we just want you know we always want everything to we want our things to look beautiful because then we'll anticipate it tasting beautiful if it looks like something you'd feed your dog <laughs> you'd probably right. anticipate it tasting like something out of uh, canned dog food. So um, we've got our morels on here and then I'm just gonna spoon spoon these peas over it. And um, and then we're gonna um, just pop our, our uh, my ear pod is about to die. I'm gonna pop in my ear pod. So I've got the, um, the peas and morels on oh, top wow. of the mash. And then- Well, and that mash keeps them from rolling around too. Right. And so our, I'm gonna put this one in. So our, um, our egg right here is now perfect. So I'm just wow. gonna scoop it out delicately. And then you wanna have a towel or a, um, a paper towel underneath to just dry it out. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this is a great dinner too. Like if you've got leftover rice or quinoa or risotto um, and just spoon a, so you can do this gently, oops. Wow, and an egg Over just it. makes it. Yeah, and then we just, you know, ooze the uh, ooze the yellow out, and um, and there we go. You that, see that is. Hold on, I need to screenshot while we're here. <laughs> I have to have can a front see, piece for can this. You see thing the, can you see the yellow? Yeah. All right. It's beautiful. Maybe that's, is that better? Unbelievable, Laura. Do you screenshot it? Yeah. And this I one's so big, you could probably do two and cut it in half and, and share yeah. it with somebody. Um, but it just, you know, it's just so springy and beautiful. The yellow from the yolk and the, the bright green from the peas and the avocado. Um, it's just such a beautiful springtime. Super easy to make. I mean, it took, us, took me a few minutes to saute the bread, a few minutes to saute the morels, mash up an avocado and um, poach sure. an egg and you're good to go. So take that, Rachel Ray's 30 minute meals. <laughs> exactly. And um, just, I wanna go over one more wine because we're gonna taste them with your food, but I've been now, the third one is this Jean Rosen Pinot Blanc with this pretty mm. uh, vineyard in the, on the label. Yeah. Which is a little more creamy of a style. And again, I'm going back to the okra. It's just texturally mm -hmm. perfect with the okra, but it still has that snappy green brightness that is really gonna go with so many things but this is going to be this will be amazing with the cheese mm -hmm. and the eggs. Um, yeah, fantastic. So I'm going to. So now a wedge. I want you to taste your food with the wine as you come through it too, though, if you can. Okay, I'm going to cut a wedge of this frittata, 
And I'm just, I'm gonna um, grate a little bit of pecorino over the top. Okay, hi, Jerome so, Selections. Um, oh, hi, Julie, by the way. I didn't say hi to you so earlier. Check that That's out. That's so great, Laura. Oh, Isn't it beautiful? Amazing. Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, like I said, we eat with our eyes. Where's my, oh, here's my pecorino. Um, we eat with our eyes. So um, as, as beautiful as you can make something look, um, we will, it will taste even better. So I'm just going to do a little, a little snow flurry of pecorino on top. <laughs> and, uh, and then you can, if you're serving it, you can sprinkle some basil on it. Um, you know, you can put some, a basil leaf on it if you want to go, go really fancy. Um, but I'm going to try that. And let's check on our frittata over here. Turn that off. So our frittata is cooking. You guys can now, see you, this. That, the lid is keeping the heat in, so it's cooking on the top as well, right? Right, right. Okay. So I've got this on low, and um, I'm just going around the sides here. So I'm going to keep that back on. It's probably got another 10 minutes to go. Okay. So let's do this guy. So I'm going to have the frittata. So it's got the eggs, the... Um, the basil, the asparagus, the spring onion, avocado, and um, which one should I try it with first? I think do the Pierre Spar because that's the one I drank a couple days ago and don't have it in front of me, but I really loved it with the fiddlehead ferns, mm. which would be the equivalent of like a green bean flavor because it, again, was snappy. It had that creaminess. It had a nice, crisp freshness to it. Do you mean the um, Paul Blanc? Which one? The What did I say? Paul? Yes, I'm sorry. Paul Blanc. Paul Blanc. Yeah. Okay. A block. Um, I get a lot the of glare. that. Um, yeah, the glare. exactly. The glare. There we go. Ah. <laughs> um, you know what I love about it is um, you get the brightness, like that right pear or that tart pear. Yeah. Yep. Um, but you also get like the that almond, and you get the, that mm. cheese rind, like a Parmesan cheese rind. Hundred percent. Which I think is plays it so well. Is it a nutty almond or it's like the white slivers? Or for me, it's a green almond. If anybody's ever had green almonds, which is very much more subtle and like green, but there's a there's a white almond too, the nut. Right, I'm getting more like the raw almond. So it's okay. the same thing, yeah. But it's still fresh, yeah. Mm, it's no, beautiful that, with it. It's great. Yeah, it just, and also the feta in here is, is salty. So, yeah. um, so we're getting all the flavors, you know, with our mouth, as you know, it's sweet, salty, um, sour, umami and i always forget the fourth one <laughs> but we're getting all bitter. of that with these bitter, bitter. thank you but that's but we're getting that's all something that, that laura we haven't talked too much about bitter flavors because americans think it's a bad thing and there's a brilliant cookbook called bitter that it it's all about using the green bitterness in vegetables like mm. radicchio but also there is a bitter thing in green beans it's that little bit that excites the edge of your tongue that for me right is tension it adds a it adds it makes you kind of lift up in your seat and go oh that's interesting and mm -hmm. again we think it's a bad thing but the 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 analogy that always sticks in my mind is she says a fruit tart in europe you would burn the edges a little bit which adds a bitterness whereas american mm -hmm. palate is much more sweet and you want all that sweet. sugar and that voluptuous fruit but yeah they're bitter is a good thing and that's these wines have that it's not if you don't like those flavors it's not strong enough to make Turn you unhappy. Off. yeah but it's there and again they just they make you lean forward they make you kind of clench your butt and sit up and go oh what's that <laughs> Which, clench your they're, cheeks <laughs> they're so refreshing i love it um uh so uh, exactly on the bitter we're we're the american palate is so trained on sweetness you know we're our kids are addicted to sugar and you know because there's high fructose corn syrup in everything so our the American palate goes much more to like milk chocolate, but in bitterness also, for example, I always use the, um, the dark chocolate red wine comparison because everybody's, you know, you always hear in the marketing, red wine and chocolate, red wine and chocolate, especially on Valentine's Day, red wine and chocolate, red wine and chocolate. And that's actually not the best pairing with chocolate, as you know. Um, the, the reason that the red wine and chocolate go together though is because they're both, they both have a bitter component. Right. And, um, and so that's the part that goes together. So they're, they're similar flavors, but as you know, the ultimate pairing and you are Mr. Sweet wine King is chocolate and sweet wine. Yeah. So, um, so, but, um, but I digress. So let's see how our, that guy's going a few more minutes and let's try this um, Christini. 
and I want to get some, I'm going to try and eat this delicately. I don't know if it's possible <laughs> without making a complete mess. I want to say that this, um, the Jean Rosen is going to be good with your frittata also, that super creamy textural okay. thing with the feta and the egg is going to be pretty great. But with this one, maybe the, um, the Meeknock, because it's a okay. little more crisp. <laughs> and is there any butter in those vegetables? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have the fat from the avocado. So yeah, mm -hmm. you have the fat from the avocado and there's a, there's a mm. fatty textural thing from the peas. Mm. So this is Even the- camera, nothing like it. Oh no, sorry, McNock. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I'll cover my mouth. Mm. Mm. That just, I mean, it, they just melded together. Two plus two equals five. That's what exactly. I call it. Exactly. Yeah, they just, they really, I can't even describe it. You're much better at this than I am, but they just, they, they melded so beautifully together. Yeah. Like each one enhanced the other. And yeah. um, I think the, it, did, um, it made the wine creamy. Cause I, well, I sauteed the morels in butter, morels and peas. Yeah. So there's a little butter in that. And there's a little bit, I don't have butter on the bread, but the creaminess of the avocado. On the olive oil. The earthiness. Bread. Olive oil on the bread, yeah. I'm gonna pour but a little bit of this. <laughs> there's a white pepper, green, uh, and green in the sense of something not being ripe. The wine is completely ripe and perfect, but like uh, mm. a fruit or vegetable, it's just on that uh, cusp of being ripe, where it has a little bit of like, again, it, it draws your attention. You're like, oh, whoa, this is something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, uh, there's a greenness to match the greens in your in your food. But that acidity and that um, the little bit of tannin, it, it just like refreshes your palate. And, and it just, again, two plus two equals five. It makes an extraordinary compliment. Right. And your mouth's watering. And so you want to eat more food, which is exactly. every bar trick in the world. <laughs> right. But it's, um, it makes it, it, it definitely enhances the creaminess of the wine. Yeah. Which is what you wouldn't expect. Um, yeah. This is a beautiful wine. Yeah, it, it really is. And it's, it's funny. I, I always... Mm. It's so rare when you go out to dinner that you can taste, um, I find this with champagne, but with wines like this to taste them side by side, the diversity yeah. of just these four different Pinot Blancs, there's so many flavors and so many different combinations of, it's like, it's like a string quartet, You're, you only have four voices, but you can get an extraordinary range of emotions and textures and things. Whereas with these wines, there's, it's a myriad combination of greenness, of acidity, of um, right. fruitiness, of glycerol, alcohol, textural, and it's just, everyone is different and they're fantastic to do mm -hmm. side by side. So what music would you pair with this? Um, this is kind of like a Vivaldi string quartet, kind of like bouncy, jou jouncy is one of my words that um, doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but it's jouncy. It's juicy and bouncy and it, it kind of like wakes you up and it, it's full of energy and it's vibrant and it's it's green and it's a lot of Baroque music kind of is, is like, it's a snap. Again, it's like snap. The, yeah. the strings are tight in the violins and you're like bouncing along. It's so refreshing. And um, you, you just, you don't see it too much on menus here, at least on, on this half of the country. Um, and it, it, I, to me, it's like the perfect spring, summer uh, wine. I mean, it's light, it's beautiful. It's um, really refreshing. Um, it goes with it, so many foods. This, some people might not think this is a good thing, but I've, cause I have a Pinot Blanc by the glass almost all the time. I, I've taken the, off this month, but I'm gonna put it back on after today. <laughs> um, because it's always affordable. That's another thing is that it's, mm -hmm. it's an affordable mm -hmm. wine. And it, honestly, your mom from, or your aunt from Ohio who doesn't go out much is not gonna be, Sometimes there's wines, like I always say a really good Pinot Grigio is not a consumer Pinot Grigio because they want something different. This is a wine that like your aunt from Ohio who mm -hmm. goes to the Olive Garden all the time, she's gonna love it because it's accessible, right. it's right. fruity, it's enough acid, it's balanced, it's fresh. She's gonna like it. But your wine nerd friend who who's having fish tacos and doesn't know what to do with it or whatever, they're gonna be happy with it. Right. Yeah, these are these are beautiful. They really are. Um, should I show my little map? Oh, yes, show the map. <laughs> this is my wine geek part coming out. So let's see <laughs> if you can see here. So this is the um, Wine Folly wine map of Alsace, which is in the, um, it's in the northeastern corner of France, right against Germany and Austria. And so no coincidence that most of the Pinot Blanc is grown in um, Germany, Alsace, 
and Italy. So here we've got the Rhine River. So this is the border of Germany right here. And then over here, all this over here, those are the Vosges Mountains. And then all these are wineries. So it's a pretty, pretty long um, It's funny that all range. four of these are kind of close by, isn't it? Yeah. And so these are, all four of these wines are really, like, I think the farthest distance is maybe 20 minutes apart. Mm -hmm. So they're all really close to each other in this little cluster, kind of in the, um, you know, the, kind of the middle of this, um, right middle, of this yeah. valley here. Yeah, the mountain range. So, um, so they're uh, close proximity, similar but um, but each really unique. Back to the the terroir of. I did of a vineyard chat with uh, Jean Frederic Hugel overlooking Reek beer, and he mentioned that because it's so close to the German border, that his uncle was like born, I think French, then became German, then became French, then became French. German, then became French. <laughs> because the the country's gone back and forth, and so you look at this the um the, the land, and it, it's gone back and forth from two countries. But the thing that strikes me too about this region, it's so pretty, and when you show pictures of it. People are like, oh, it's like a storybook. And you're like, well, that's where our storybooks came from. Those little, right, like, exactly. you know, all the Grimm's fairy tales, they're all yeah. from that part of the world. And so the cottages and the roofs and the villages, they all look like something of the storybooks that we grew up with. So it's just, it's a magical, magical place. Right, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> exactly. I can't even think of the titles of things. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was looking, when I was looking this up last night, I was just, you know, every time I see them, I'm just blown away by the beauty of it because all you see is green and yeah. um, you know, Alsace is known for the steep slopes. So, um, so you've got these steep slopes that just look out over, over this gorgeous Valley and it just takes your breath away. And um, you know, you just, you, you know why people do what they do because it's, it, it's just so beautiful. Um, Laura, I want to ask your chef advice and your wine yeah. knowledge. I bought this Russian rye, bread that I love. I have it every Ooh. week with caraway seeds. It's, it's so good. It's like black Russian rye bread. And I think what I'm going to do is saute my fiddleheads in butter and mm. then just put this with butter and kind of have them room temperature and cut it into little like, like fancy Triangles. sandwich, like open face sandwich <laughs> and just have yeah. that. That'll be good, right? Yeah. And just do a little sprinkle of salt on top. Okay. And it's perfect. I, I mean, that's the, sprinkling yeah, salt. you want to get some good fleur de sel. Um, you know, oh, just, you're okay. just going to use that as a garnish. So fleur de sel okay. is the um, that very, very, very top layer of um, that they skim off the salt, of, off right. the top of the salt and salt flats. It's like the best salt. And, My um, cooking salt is cell gris, which is the bottom part of that. And right. it always has That's more minerals from the sea and stuff. But right. um, you're right. But Malden would be good, too. I need here's, to get some Malden for the home. Oh, my God. Here's our frittata. Wow. Is that so, really cooked up and so quick? Yeah, really fast. It's, I mean, because when you have the top on it, it keeps the heat in. So, Marquita's um, here. Hey, Marquita. Hey, Marquita. Um, beautiful pictures, Marquita, that you posted. Um, oh, what were we saying? Oh, the salt. So the fleur de sel. Um, you never want to cook with fleur de sel. You know, if you put right. fleur de sel in, you know, that, that pot of pasta would be like $50. So yeah. fleur de sel is really just a garnish and, and, mm -hmm. and test it at home. Like cut a wedge of a tomato, cut two wedges and just try one plain and then try one with some uh, fleur de sel sprinkled on it. And it just makes the flavor explode. My friend's husband, when, I, when we were, when I was living in France, um, he, we were having dinner, he was over and he said, Oh, I don't eat tomatoes. I was like, you're in my kitchen. <laughs> you have a so, tomato. Have um, a so I gave him a tomato with fleur de sel. And he was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm like, yes, yeah. this is what tomatoes taste yeah. like. So it just it just brings out the flavor. And it's a way to enhance anything that you're cooking. Um, you know, it's acid. Anything salt acid will amp up the flavor. So a lot of times when I'm making soup and it's it's kind of flat, like if it's a like a butternut squash soup or, mm -hmm. you know, some sort of soup like that. And it's just kind of flat. Um, mm -hmm. Like even with gazpacho and make gazpacho, I'll add in some acid. So it could be um, like with gazpacho, if I have it, I'll use white, white balsamic or um, more lime juice or, you know, you don't want to put in a ton of salt, but right. salt and acid will amp up um, the flavor of something and just give it yeah. a little kick. So, yeah. So that's what, that's, that's, um, that's one of my, things lately is like when you go to a restaurant like in the old days you would have um chateaubriand or something like that and those dishes they needed wine to finish them 
Nowadays, when you go to a restaurant, you're going to get a composed dish that has sweet, salt, bitter, umami, all that. It's going to have a crunch. It's going to have height. It's, gonna, it's all these things that is complete already. And so it becomes, in a way, it becomes easier because any wine's going to go with it, but no wine are needed for it. And that is, I think, kind of, these wines are like that in a way. They're balanced. There's a lot of fruit. There's enough acid. There's enough alcohol and then a hint of like that tannin texture that mm -hmm. these wines are like that they're going to go with a salad they're not going to get lost against the steak they're going to be fine with like a pasta and a big sauce they're going to be great with a cream sauce they're going to be great with vegetables um but again it's these wines have that pairing thing and they they um amplify things just like you're talking about acid right exactly it's the acid in the wines it's the same yeah. thing i mean if you had some not that we have any, but if you happen to have some uh, a little Pinot Blanc left over, throw it in the soup. <laughs> All right. Just amp it up. <laughs> um, you know, when I'm making a, a sauce, so my my favorite roast chicken, I'll um, you know I stuff it with a thing of Borzan cheese and then make the sauce out of it, and I'll always add a little white wine. So you know, the white wine that we usually have around is is a Chardonnay or a Chenin, but I mean a Pinot Blanc would be great um, to put in a sauce as well. So, um, not this is from Marquita because she wasn't here earlier. I'm sorry. Oh. Meat knock and a radish. It's unbelievable. The um the the acid brightens up and shows off the fruit and the radish. I interrupted you again, Laura. I'm the worst. I'm apologize. No, it's fine. <laughs> should we t should we taste through these wines like one at a time? Yes, but you have Since to. The... Can you can you start and be the star with the Pinot Blanc? The I'm sorry, they're all Pinot Blanc with the um Paul Blanc. Yeah, sure. Just because oh, mine's I'm empty. Gonna... And I was oh, okay. saying I had that with the people had burned a couple of days ago and it was just so snappy and fresh um, right. and a perfect example of this wine. So Jeff, you'd and also gotta... talked about, make... oh, sorry, you'd, you'd also talked about making pasta. You're going to make pasta, asparagus, mushrooms, fava beans. Yeah. That's another I did great, that, last week. Um, yeah, that was another great pairing with Pinot Blanc. So, and uh, um... that's another thing that I keep fava, fava beans or, um, Edamame, what's the um, edamame? Edamame, I guess, just keep them yeah. shelled in the freezer. And anytime mm -hmm. you're having these kind of vegetables, just throw them in for a little protein into your like pasta or your pesto or whatever. It's great, yeah, because we're always looking at how do we add protein without adding like red meat? Exactly. You know, try to lighten our, our um, lighten our, I don't want to say diet, but lighten our diet what? and-, um, and uh, Thanks, David. Um, okay, so Paul Blanc. This Paul Blanc? Yes, this is our Paul Blanc. And he is from Kindtheim. Um, they make about 120,000 bottles a year. They have five grand crews, and the sons took it over from their father in 1984. So there's been a lot of continuity. Um, so cheers. Cheers. Oh, you're empty. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> mm, so right away, I get like that that raw almond, that cheese rind that we talked about. Um, sort uh -huh. of that, but I think you always get apple and pear with Pinot Blanc, right? Absolutely. Always yeah, then that comes, yeah, and then that comes after like that kind of tart yeah. pear. A um, little like lemon, definitely lemon zest. And, um, yeah. And not just lemon, but lemon zest. It's a little more right. earthy, a little intense. more like uh, Much more around. intense. Yeah. Yeah, it lasts longer, more intense. You know, I'm still, my mouth is still, um, watering, mm -hmm. it's still going, I can still taste it. But also that, that great minerality that's in there, like that, the, the gravel is yes. so good. That minerality just brightens it up so much. It gives exactly. it that snap. <laughs> snap. All right, what should we do, John Rosen? Uh, sure. We'll do John Rosen next, this guy here. Now this is that creamy one that I think is gonna go really good right. with the cheese and the egg. But um, right. super fresh, Cheers. delicious. Yeah, they're all about the same uh, color. I thought the, the um, Weinbach was just a little bit, um, had a little bit more color to it, but. Yeah, okay. Mm. They're just, they're so good. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. It's, mm. it's, this one's texture, but it has a, it has a, a brightness. Um, that just, it's a zippiness that, um, I have the gloomy gray day here in New York and it's the perfect wine for this because it's its creamy that's gonna kind of lull yeah. you to sleep, but 
but it's zippiness that kind of wakes you back up. It's it's right. Fantastic. It's just that buzz, and 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 both of those play it's off scary. this food perfectly. Um, yeah. So you know you've got the the earthy of the morels, and and then you've got the bright peas, and um, and then you've got the earthy eggs and vegetables that are sautéed, and then the bright feta. So, mm -hmm. um, so all these, all these, um, flavors are at play here. And, you know, when you're thinking about pairing food and wine, you want to think, um, you know, are you going opposites? Are you going same? Are you going to balance them out? Um, you know, you want to have a, you would never pair, or at least I wouldn't, maybe you would, but, um, like a penal blog with a, a big thick T-bone, um, right. you know, that just sort of blows it out of the water. So you always want to think about, um, things that, that, that play well together in the sandbox, if you will. 100%. And, um, you know, these are all beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, these just pick up the flavors of, of yeah. these other of the food, and they just enhance it. So let's see, let's do Mitnacht again. Okay. We'll do Christoph Mitnacht. Does this that mean midnight, I'm assuming? Huh? Is Mi Mignard means um, midnight, I'm assuming? Midnight, I think, yeah. Okay. This is the one that I love with the radish, because it's a little more okay. high toned. Um, but a hundred percent of that fruit there, this would be amazing with oysters too. Ooh. Um, it's got a different, um, a slightly different nose than the other ones. Yeah. Super fresh, super bright, still a nice textural mouth feel though. Mm. Snappy. But yeah, really creamy and very snappy. <laughs> I'm going to use that from now on. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy, this guy runs $19. I mean, you, you know, and these two. The um the Jean Rosen is eleven. I mean you can't beat that. And then the yeah, um the Paul Blanc is twelve dollars. So these um, are tremendous values always. Yeah. Oh like you know, and it's like I even had to ask you, like, what's Pinot Blanc? And um I was looking at it last night and it's just it's a mutation of the Pinot Noir grape. Um it tastes nothing like Pinot Noir, but um but you, you don't see it very often. You don't see it in the stores. Um, right. on, on at least out here on the west coast um, on uh, on wine lists so um, you know if you can get them online they're they're just a great deal they're beautiful yeah. super easy you know you don't feel guilty putting them in a sauce <laughs> right exactly. like you wouldn't do your grand grand cru burgundy in a sauce but this would be this is just great and you can drink right. it and cook with it so you know they always say don't put something in food that you wouldn't drink and so exactly. these are the perfect example um, Laura then, Martina is asking to pair Pinot Blanc with asparagus. There's asparagus in your frittata, right? There is. Yeah. Let me try and dig out some asparagus. Let's see if we can. So it's, this is one of those, I've always thought Sauvignon Blanc was the better pairing, but with asparagus, these wines, I think you want to go more a high toned one and a little less creamy, but enough. It's like those tannins on the edge of your mouth that get woken up from these wines. Those wines will still go with asparagus. Yeah, I just did an asparagus bite with the Weinbach, and and it was great together. Um, it didn't, it yeah. didn't give you any off. It didn't give you any off flavor. Yeah. Um, it didn't give you that like tinny that makes your right. make sure your shoulders go up. Right. <laughs> um, so no, no, it's beautiful with it. I had sautéed the asparagus, so mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of people like to blanch their asparagus or um, boil them. And I am not a fan of just boiled vegetables. Like I need more flavor. I like mine a little deeper, caramelized, yeah. sauteed. Mm -hmm. That to me, that brings out just such a beautiful flavor in the vegetables. So, yeah. um, so I always do that. And so that will tone down that 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 bitterness that we talked about, yeah. um, and bring a bring a a sweeter earthiness to it. Beautiful, right? So, um, so let's do the. Is that, the, is that the frittata bundle. on the back, or you're good? You don't need to do anything. The frittata is done. I turned it off and um, and I it mean, is gosh. perfect. Oh, I really want to come over and have that for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> I think if we lived near um, each other, we'd each weigh about 800 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. And never be sober. Um, and uh, let's, let's talk about happening. the vine box. It's the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love this guy. This one comes in at 26, which is the highest one of the four. But I mean, still incredibly incredibly affordable um so yeah and for me it was i got a little bit more color to this one than the others but there's a richness be, to it yeah, yeah yeah cheers cheers honey i just drank on mine sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> but so for people that weren't here we did the um you mashed peas and avocado on toast that you grilled in a pan with olive oil and then topped it with morels Peas, yeah. and then a poached egg. 
and it was a fantastic yeah. pairing with all four of these wines. Yeah. Just gorgeous. And, and then, then we had our... talk us through the frittata. So our frittata, so um, here it is, voila. Uh, yes. So I sauteed all the vegetables individually. So I sauteed the asparagus um, and I peel, I always peel my asparagus. So you know when you say to snap, the problem with snapping is you lose half Waste. the asparagus. So I just, yeah. I usually just cut a, like maybe a quarter inch, half inch off the bottom and then I peel them from the tips mm -hmm. down. So you've got, so it's still good. So you've got this whole asparagus and then I just cut them on the bias in about one, one and a half inch pieces, saute them, um, a little olive oil, salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I just, I toss the, the peas in and then I, um, I did the same thing with the spring onions. Um, I just cut them a uh, quick saute just to deepen the, deepen the flavor, give a little the white and the red are the white and the um, green. Yeah. I put it all together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love the green just because of the color. So beautiful. And um, it's a little, it's a little less potent than the white end. So I think it's a great blend together. And um, uh, I put those in uh, with some basil and then we put in some feta and um, we topped it with a little, a little snow flurry of pecorino. And, um, and it's just that because the Pinot Blanc pairs so well with, with like a, a hard salty cheese yeah. um, that it just, it just brought out the flavors of both so beautifully. So, yeah. Um, so if anybody's in San Francisco, come on over and help me eat this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are closing in on an hour, so I want to start to okay. wind this down. But um, I think this, all four of these wines are fantastic, and they're, they're fantastic beautiful. pairings. My little version of cooking was having some radishes in a bowl. Great pairing. Grilled okra. Oh, okra. Oh, okra, which I've eaten all of them now. Great pairing. How was that? How was the okra with it? It was really good with all of them. I gotta say that, I hate the word sliminess, but it was, once you grill them, it's much, much less. Mm -hmm. And that made the creaminess of the wines just, the creaminess of the wines just made these, honestly, a beautiful pairing. And I just tossed oh, them in olive oil and salted them when I was, when they were on the pan smoking up my apartment. <laughs> um, your smoke lit, your smokeless grill. <laughs> I, my smokeless grill, but I did have to unplug my smoke alarm. <laughs> um, that's step one. Well, step one is always have a fire extinguisher handy. Right. Step two, unplug the smoke alarm and open the windows. Right. But, you know, grilled vegetables are pretty awesome. They are. And if you don't have and, a, a little mini grill, you can just put them on a, you can put them on a, if you've got a cooling rack, um, just put them on a cooling rack on a sheet pan and put them in the oven. And you can roast oh, right. them. And oh, yeah, yeah. So you okay. get you get similar. Uh, you know, you don't get that that beautiful charred grill flavor yeah. that we love so much in the summer. But um, but you can get pretty close. Yeah, exactly. You don't get but that. Get... But there's exactly. a lot of smoke in my house to get that. Right. Exactly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine if you no, want to really, some fire. I gotta say, they're very good. But they also, um, I always cut you off when I get so excited That's talking right. to you. Um, go, go, go. But the thing about these grilled <laughs> vegetables is you just chop them up and toss them with pasta and butter or pesto or whatever, and you have another dish and throw an egg on that too. And it's like fantastic. Exactly. It's so versatile. Um, yeah. And that's what I love about, you know, this, you know, once you learn how to saute, once you understand, um, oh my gosh, you know, once you understand a few techniques, you can make anything. I mean, it just opens up your whole world. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. open your refrigerator and you say, okay, I've got some okra. Not that this would ever happen to me, but I've got some okra and some eggs. What can I do? You know, right. I've got some okra right. and some pasta. But now you know, okay, I can saute the okra. Um, I've got some cheese. I can throw in some pasta and I've got a great dinner. Put, a, put an egg on it and, um, and we're good to go. So, yeah, so it's so versatile. It just it really opens up. That's what I love is um, I really try to um, encourage people to not be um, tethered to a, a recipe. Because yeah. the problem then is if you don't have one ingredient, you'll never make it. But just really sort of zeroing in on the technique of the recipe, then that just al allows you to um, substitute in whatever you happen to have that, that exactly. would be similar. So, but that's and what's then fun about talking about flavors. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, no I meant just... back to your radish. So in France, the classic sandwich is baguette, butter, radish, and salt. <laughs> and... Um, you know, put that, bring that on a picnic with a bottle of Pinot Blanc under the Eiffel Tower, and and life right. is really good. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat the rest of these radishes. All right, um, Laura, thank you. Thank you. It's always thank you so a much. delight cooking with you. 
You too. Um, we're going to do this fun. again in two weeks on the 22nd. So come back. And if people want recipes or more info, they can DM you or me. And yeah. please follow Drink Alsace to learn more about these yeah. wines. And hi, Nea in Chateau Carson in Bordeaux. Um, you just missed Bonjour. us cooking. Um, okay, honey, I'll let you go. And uh, mm. thanks again. This was wow. really fantastic. You're always so, Thank you so uh, much. educational. I learned so much. Thank you, doll. Thank you. Take care. Mwah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>